Hi and welcome to another episode. What we've got here is a Raspberry Pi 4B, 8GB, overclocked to 2GHz or 2000MHz and the GPU is overclocked to 700MHz. I know you're supposed to be able to push them a little bit further but that seems to be like sort of the main stable usage that I've got out of this so far and it seems to be what many other people are getting as well. Now as you can see I've got a little sensor hooked up to my multimeter which will show me the external temperature which it's currently saying is 32 degrees Celsius or if you drop down to 31 well it's obviously floating around there somewhere and the sensor for the Raspberry Pi itself is actually saying in just about seeing the top right there it's hovering around 40 degrees Celsius now the sensor I have no clue how good that really is because obviously it's just hooked up to a relatively cheap multimeter. I don't have a sensor to tell you what the room temperature is or the ambient temperature, um, but I'm guessing it's around 21, 22 degrees Celsius because it's not that warm in here. Um, it's quite early in the morning still, so the sun hasn't come up and warmed everything up in uh, wet old England. Now, I will be running a stress test on this called Stressberry. And what it does is for about two and a half minutes, it makes it uh, check for idle temperatures, uh, draws a graph, and then for about five minutes, it uh, stresses the CPU out, hence the name, uh, benchmarks it so that you know how fast, all well, the temperatures for that particular speed. So for about five minutes, it does it at full whack at 2000 megahertz or two gigahertz and then it cools down again for about two and a half minutes again. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you a graph of what the, the, inter the internal temperatures are for in here, but also I'll be telling you what the maximum external temperature was. There's no point talking about the lower ones um, because obviously that's just the lower temperatures. What we're interested in is what the highest temperature it gets to. Now, hopefully it's somewhat sensitive but the idea is to see how much of a jump it is. So we're starting off at 32 degrees Celsius on the outside. I'll now start the stress test, which I've been clever and already typed in the commands. And then we'll see what it does. I'll not bore you for the approximate 10 minutes of uh, benchmarking. And then when I've done this though, what I'll do is um, open up the case. I'm going to stick on some thermal padded heat sinks, these tiny little ones, onto the G, not the GPU, the USB and the networking chips. That's not going to make any difference to the temperature of the main CPU, but it will help keep those particular chips cool. But what I'm going to be doing then is changing the thermal pads that was used by Argon 40. Um, I'm not saying they're bad ones, but I believe them to be at the lower end of thermal pads. And I'm going to change it out for this uh, minus, minus pad 8, which are by Thimmel Grizzly, and I'll talk a little bit more about that when I'm using it. So I'll see you with the next graft of this one. Okay, let's have a look at the output from all of that. Let's have a look now. Zoom in a little bit. Now we can see that obviously it was idling, even peaked at 43 degrees Celsius at one point when it was idling, but then it shoots up when it's actually been told to start doing stuff at two gigahertz. And slowly but surely, well not slowly, but actually quite quickly, it jumps up to roughly 55 degrees Celsius. And then that's when the fan starts to kick in and as you can see, the fan being at 10% does actually keep it hovering around between 55 and 56 degrees Celsius, sometimes peaking all the way up to 57, um, a random dip all the way down to 54. So it does a good job at keeping it within that realm of 55, 56 degrees Celsius when the fan's at 10%. And then when the fan's turned off, sorry, not the fan turned off, the overclocking is turned off and goes back to normal um, speeds for idling 
it stays higher than what it was before, but that makes sense because obviously it needs time to cool down and it's only doing it for two and a half minutes. So it does stay relatively warm afterwards, but that's still a, a fine temperature to be for idling. Um, from what I understand is that the processor can go all the way up to 80 degrees Celsius before you have to start worrying that you, you know, you're going to burn the thing out. So now we've had a look at this one, let's have a mess about and change the thermal pads across. So full screen and I'll turn everything off. So I'm just clicking shut down. And when it has done that, there's little red lights on the front so you might be able to see. And when it shuts down properly, a little red light turns off. So let's take the SD card out because that's in the way when you're taking it all off. So to actually touch it now, it does uh, feel a little bit warm. The highest peak of the temperature, by the way, for the external of the case was 39 degrees Celsius. So we flip it over. Well, actually, first, let's take all the cables out because the otherwise it's uh, actually I probably could have left them in there, but it's just easier. Right, obviously leave the sensor on the front. I'll not bore you while you watch and see me take all the screws off, but I'll come back when I'm actually inside. Okay, taking the base off, I've been taking out the one, two, three, four screws that flow around to there. So now I can just take everything out. At least try to. There we go. As you can see from last time, the fans in there it is only a 30 millimeter fan. Why they didn't make it a 40 mil 40 millimeter fan just off to the side? Um, and sort of go around to the edges. I don't know, because they could have done that and it would have been a lot better um, to have a 40 mil fan. And also for those with us that would like to have done it, we could have changed it to a, a Noctua fan, which is obviously a better fan. I don't expect them to sell them with that in the first place, but at least would have given people the chance to upgrade to that if they so wished. Because obviously that's just the sum routing of lines on the motherboard that could have moved it across the same way they've covered over this vent they could have covered this vent over a little bit as well um, I just think it's a, it's a shame that they've stuck with the 30 mils because there is some well-known good makes for 40 mil ones I'm not saying 30 mil ones are bad it's just there are no names for even the average person that's into this sort of thing uh, would know about for 40 mil anyway what I want to do is swap out the thermal pads. So let me get my tweezers and see if I can pull this off all in one go. It should be quite easy really to say that I've just had it um, on. Where can I put this without getting it everywhere? Um, oh, I've left myself not too good of a place to put this. I don't want to just dunk it down. One moment while I find something. Okay, let's dump it on the back of here. Well, now that I've taken it off, I'm obviously not using that again. If you are going to replace in this, I recommend doing it while the processor and the GPU are on the warm side because it will come up an awful lot easier than doing it when it's cold. And just to be sure, I'll clean things up a little bit with this. So let's get going with it. Okay, so the Q-tip is completely soaked in uh, electronics cleaner. Go over this chip. 
to the CPU. There's more left behind on the GPU. I don't want any of it left behind. That's nice and clean. And just to be sure for the contacts of what's actually on there. Okay. You can see maybe that uh, there was still some on there, even though it looked like it was all nice and clean. So put that to the side and let's take out this. Now the difference with this is with the GB on it, the excellent thermal conductivity, no bleeding, long-term stability, electronically insulating, uh, which means that obviously if you do get a bit onto electronics, it's not going to spread about. And now this particular stuff, unlike the cheap uh, little blue pad types ones that you see, um, which are one and a half watts per meter per uh, Kelvin, those uh, will work because my friend Arcade Ren had used them and it helped uh, lower the temperatures on his. But I've splashed out a bit and bought Thermal Grizzly. Now I use these Thermal Grizzly's products on my main CPUs and they really do help. So I thought I'd give their stuff a go. This was around um, 11, 12, 11 or 12 pounds. Um, so quite expensive for what you get, but you get high quality stuff because obviously 8 watts per meter per Kelvin is quite a step up for one and a half. Now I have no idea what this grey gunky stuff that Argon 40 is using and um, they don't mention how good it is but I've got a feeling it's not as good as this. I'm just trying to find my scissors so that I can get into the packet. It's supposed to be terrible but um, I've not had my Weetabix this morning. Let's have a look inside. There we go. It's a resealable bag. And basically you end up with two strips of it. It appears to be, well, quite frankly, it looks like a long strip of bubble gum. But what we need to do is to cut it to size. So I'll do that now because it'll be boring for you to watch otherwise. I will cut this to size to fit there and then cut to size to fit on there. So back in a moment. Okay, that was interesting. Basically lining it up on here, snipping across the bottom, snipping down the, the edge there, leaves you with a piece. It's basically the exact size to fit onto there. Quite amazing really, but um, seems to be correct. So let me put this away in there. Obviously 10 or 12 pounds to buy all of that just for two little chunks is maybe overkill. We'll find out in a moment uh, when we've tested the temperatures. Hopefully I get a better result than what Arcade Ren got on his. Now, let's be honest, he does live in a very hot uh, area in America, uh, but he used um, a thermal pad that was 1.5, um, what's the, the terminology, 1.5 watts per meter per Kelvin. And this is eight watts. So we'll see how good difference, if there is any difference. I mean, is it any better than the, the stock stuff that they give? Who knows? Simple. We will after I do this result. So I'm carefully peeling off the backing and getting it out of the way. I don't want to end up putting it somewhere else. I'm taking off one side and resting it down onto the area that it needs to go. And because it is conductive free, electrically conductive free, it doesn't matter, it overlaps a little bit. You can either use your fingernails 
I might have to use some tweezers. I do have some just at the side here if it's a bit uh, sticky. It does seem to like static and uh, stick to me, so I'm glad I've got uh, this. Obviously, I need to take off some backing. Because if you leave the backing on, it's not going to do its job. So line that up a little bit better. I think for this one I'm going to need my tweezers. There we go. So that's looking good so far. Put this back on. Squeeze it down, it's all into place. It's definitely not too thick, I don't think. Right, I'll mess around putting all the screws back in again and then we'll get to the part of where we do the stress test again. Okay, so I've done the thermal pads and closed it all down and forgot I was supposed to put in the heat sinks back on. So what I'll explain is that when you're cutting for this, if you line it up to the edges, you'll end up with a piece that's sort of sticking out and that happens to be the correct size for the, the, uh, the GPU bit. I'm currently just trying to find the edge of this blue stuff on the heat sinks and I'm placing them horizontal to the the ports at least trying to just to help with any kind of cooling at all I have no idea if it's really needed or not but I've noticed with other cases they do give you heat sinks whereas for some reason Argon 40 hasn't bothered um, so anyway let's mess around and see if replacing the thermal pads is actually worthwhile. So I'll close it all up again. And of course making sure that uh, the screws and everything are done the way that they're supposed to and all nice and tight. So I'll jump back when I put all the screws back in again. Fine, I've got everything in there now. I've got the thermal pads uh, replaced with the thermal grizzly stuff. I've got the heat sinks over the top of the controller uh, chips for the USB and the networking, whichever way around that they are in there. Um, I don't really know if the heat sinks are going to make any difference at all, but because I'm not having any sensors on there, but uh, as I say, other cases have them, so I'm sticking them on there. Let's turn this on. The external temperature is 29 degrees Celsius or 30 degrees Celsius, where it's hovering. Let's get the benchmarking going on the stress test. There we go. Create some temperatures and see how well it does. Now at first look of these graphs, we've got the stock on the left and we've got the grizzly on the right. Now at first it did seem to start off being a lot cooler but then it went up and then it seems to have hit 56 degrees which is actually here on this graph. This graph isn't very fair in the realms of where the markings are and how it's done the scale. I don't know why it's doing this 0.5 now but um, here is 56 roughly and it appears to be 56 here quite a bit and only a couple of peaks to 57 whereas here there's actually a lot more peaks at 57 to the point it's even going up to maybe 58 degrees Celsius so it's actually showing that the grizzly is not doing as well here now I do want to point out obviously um, ambient temperatures in the room it does feel like it's got a little bit warmer in here um, because obviously the morning is going on. Sadly, I don't have a sensor to take the room. I know that would have come in handy an awful lot, but 
it does seem to have peaked there but the one thing I have noticed is difference though is that the external temperature was at 36 degrees Celsius and just to refresh your memory on stock it was 38 so even though the CPU seems to be getting hotter sooner and lasting for longer the case itself is staying cooler now there's a toss up here between do you want the CPU to stay nice and cool in comparison or do you want the outer case to be cooler in comparison I realize running CPUs and graphics chips and everything cooler for a longer period of time is better because it is said that it will um, give the chips a longer lifespan. Now the point is is that at these sort of temperatures they are going to be going up and down up and down anyway and so I'm not so concerned about that what I'm more concerned about is actually the external temperature um, being with the case. Now I don't think it's that it's actually insulating the case for getting warmer as a chip gets warmer. I think what's happening is that the case is staying cooler for longer because its ambient temperature is cooler. Um, so the, the temperature is still coming up through but I think it actually helped the chip stay cooler for longer um, of where it went in because we get to roughly 150 seconds and then the peak goes up and it hits 50 whereas it hit 150 seconds and got to 49 then hit 50 now obviously there's a discrepancy between you know many data I would have to do this again and again and again and again and again and I'm not doing that this is just a little bit of fun for me and hopefully give you some information now what I will do this time though um, because obviously the fan kicks in at roughly 55 degrees Celsius at 10 percent what I'm going to do now is change the settings which can be easily done let's close these down this time let's try changing the speed of the fan inside the case um, basically I think that it getting up to say 65 degrees Celsius is fine as long as the fan doesn't kick in um, if it goes up to 67 let's just stick it in that the fan goes at 100% and not bother with the increments of going up because quite frankly when the fan's on it's on it's no quieter at 10% than it is at 100% really um, it probably is but not enough to you know, like oh I know that's a few decibels different you know you're not really going to pick up on a difference it's a it's not an annoying whine but it's a, a little fan you know so it, it, it is there so let's change the temperature to 67 and just have it go at 100 and I realize that's later than what the settings are that Argon 40 gave um, you know, as stock and maybe changing to the Grizzly thermal pads is a waste of time um, who knows because obviously what we're interested in is the outer temperature of the case as well as the temperature on the inside of the case now having all this captain tape probably isn't helping too much but captain tape does transfer heat pretty well as well so maybe the tape is holding the case back a little bit um, but after all the way that the air comes through the fan um, as it was pointed out to me by Arco and Ren, Arcade Ren sorry um, it comes up hits the top of the case and hits the back comes out of not only where the pins are but this little hole here you can just about see on the small one and then there's some grooves and channels in the magnetic flap at the back that makes it push out the vents at the back I missed that when uh, I was looking around inside the case myself um, I assumed these vents were the important ones they're not it's the ones at the back are the important one to get air out and I'm assuming they're using the ones at the side to help draw air in right so 100% speed at 67 degrees Celsius we're not interested in anything else let's run the test oh, loaded it up twice, don't need it twice, just need the once and let's do the fan speed and let's see how far it goes okay we've got the three graphs displayed here ignore where I've said stock at the end of the graph I forgot to change the name of that, it is possible to do um, I just forgot to do it but we can go by the top 
the names that I know which one is the correct one. So anyway, back to the stock one. So again, fans at 55 degrees Celsius, 10%, 60 degrees Celsius, 50%, and 65 degrees Celsius, 100%. Uh, no fancy thermal pads or anything like that. It's just all stock, hence stock. Um, it reaches, we know it reaches 67, sorry, 67, 57 uh, degrees Celsius. Um, but you know, that's okay before the fan starts kicking in at 55 and keeping things relatively cool. Now I will say with the sound of the fan, if it's 10%, 50% or 100%, you can't tell the difference. All you know, all you can hear is a little whine of a small fan. As I say, I think it'd be nice if they had redesigned it so that a 40 mil fan went in there. Because um, basically it could spin it slower, but it still shift the same amount of air. Um, but at the same time, I think maybe a fan is a bit of a waste of time at these lower temperatures because the chip can go to up to 80 degrees Celsius and still be okay. Though, of course, lower the better for a longer period of time, but you've got to think um, function over, you know, just what you actually want to use it for. Now, but the Grizzly N does seem to get uh, warmer and stay there at warmer, even on the same stock fan speeds. But then when we change the fan speed to being, it only kicks in at 60 degrees Celsius and that is the only time it kicks in. And even then when it does, it'll kick in at 100%. It got to 65 degrees Celsius, but no further. So the fan never actually kicked in at all. So is it worthwhile getting the Grizzly? I'm not 100% sure that it is for something as small as this with the heatsink like this. Um, maybe the Grizzly stuff comes in an awful lot better when you've got heat pipes and you know bigger fans to play around with, say on a graphics card that you put inside your PC. I'm not saying it's a rubbish uh, product because I doubt that it's that. I just think there's a, certain, a certain limitation when it comes to the physics and the thermal, thermal dynamics of this sort of stuff. Um, but I'm happy now that I've got it all in there. I don't need to open it up again and I'm leaving it um, that it's set to 67 degrees Celsius before the fan kicks in at 100%. Nothing before that, because it never reaches it. And as I say, when I've played um, before, and I've played around with this before, this is what gave me the whole idea to play around and maybe try out Thermal Grizzly and everything like that, is because I've already had the fan set at 67 degrees Celsius at 100% fan speed and never had the fan come on when I was playing emulation, um, say like for an Amiga emulator and playing for half an hour, it never kicked in. Yes, one other thing we need to talk about though is the external temperature reached a whopping 41 degrees Celsius. Now, granted that's a bit of a jump from the other temperatures that we had, which were um, 38 degrees Celsius for the stock, 36 degrees Celsius for the Grizzly, uh, but for here it did reach 41, but it's reached 41 because we've allowed the CPU to get an awful lot hotter than we did do with the other ones. I realise Celsius doesn't seem such a big jump, but for those that uh, use Fahrenheit you'd see a definite big jump there. Now, that's the way I'm going to leave it. I would recommend that, um, as I say, not too sure if you want to spend the money on getting Grizzly or some other kind of thermal pads, but I would get the heat sinks for the controller chips because as I say, other cases do supply them by default. Um, I do think Argon 40 might want to have a look at their uh, setup and uh, you know maybe cha charge a little bit more for the, the case, but throw in a couple of little thermal pads, uh, not thermal pads, sorry, th therm heat sinks um, in there to be used on the, the controller uh, chips. Um, because I would personally rather spend an extra pound, dollar, euro or whatever and get them thrown in rather than having to spend um, three or four pounds to get packs of these things where actually the larger heat sinks I don't actually need. So, I hope that's been some informative and gives you an idea of what you should be throwing your money at because obviously 
I will not say the throw good money after bad. So personally change the speeds of the fans so to 67 degrees Celsius and be happy with the case. Don't let wires and other things sit on this um, when in use. So quite frankly, don't bother at all. Cause obviously there is vents and things. You don't want to block them up anyway, but don't leave, you know, a game pad resting on top or other wires or USB sticks or something resting on top while it's in use. As always, happy gaming. Aha, you thought you could get rid of me. Nope. I wanted to point out the sticker that I've got for this wonderful case. Since no one bothered to tell me what kind of sticker they thought I should get, I've gone cliche, got a raspberry, it works. Now say it with me, as always, happy gaming.